truth reveals the unique purpose of God for women in our world. It confirms the worth and value of the feminine gender. My wife Becky and daughters Deborah, Daniela and Destiny will lead in the vocals. And so with faith and confidence now, women sing. things regarding the woman now we're dealing with a general topic we've been looking at fighting the right way so good evening to you and welcome to this platform my name is pastor joy and it is my singular privilege to welcome you tonight and i'm so glad for the mercy of god i'm so glad for the goodness of god i'm so glad for the patience of god towards his own god has been patient with us he has been patiently bearing with us and we are giving him all the praise we are giving him all the glory and i know that the mercy of god has been awesome towards you and towards everything that consigns you the mercy of god has never failed he has never failed they are new every morning and we give him all the praise we give him all the glory i'm so excited for what god is doing i'm so excited about it i just thank god for his mercy i just give him praise hallelujah and i know the lord has been doing some wonderful things in your life i tell you so many things the lord is doing we can't take it for granted and i wouldn't like you to take some details you know it is when some things begin to lack in our life that we begin to really understand the significance of that that is why the bible says we should bless the lord and don't forget his benefits there are so many benefits that the lord does and gives to us and we just take it for granted really i really want to ask the lord to help us to stop taking a lot of things for granted but to praise him in everything hallelujah and i thank god that you are alive if you can hear me <laughs> that means you are alive and if you are alive that means god remembered you to give you life and if god remembered you to give you life that means that everything that consigns this your life god is not forgetting about it he knows about it you need to walk by faith we are told so walk by faith and not by sight not what you see and the lord will be there for you hallelujah we have been handling the topic fighting the right way this is part four fighting the right way fighting the right way yes the Bible talked about fight so we wrestle not against flesh and blood but we do wrestle the life is a battle on its own and then when you get born again is there another battle on its own again we have been looking at fighting and who are we fighting you don't fight your friends in the real sense of it no you fight your enemies you fight oppositions you fight things that want to limit you and we have classified our enemies into two one is the spiritual enemy which is the real enemy the unseen forces of darkness they are our real enemy we have also looked at the ones that we also call enemy which is what human beings who are, 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 are against what 
what we stand for who really wants you to be resisted who fights against you who opposes you who goes whatever way it takes for them to make sure you don't progress in life we have seen so many human enemies and we've been able to look at the fact that these human enemies pushes us to the extent that we begin to respond we have seen so many christians responding in a way that is out of scripture that is not scriptural that is actually against god's own way for us to respond we saw where the lord jesus told us if your enemy hunger feed him wow if he is thirsty give him a drink he actually told us to love our enemy so in this part four we are looking at how god sees it when we don't treat our enemy the way he expects us to treat our enemy if we don't love our enemy now we have been able to see that when you love your enemy it goes a long way to do some things in their life we also have found out that that enemy that you see that is a human being is not actually the real enemy it will amaze you it's not really the real enemy. <laughs> the real enemy is the unseen forces that saw them as a tool, as a vessel to use. And they have been possessed and hijacked by the devil to cause you pain. And so many times we are fighting the, real, the wrong battle because you look at that human agent and you fight against them, you resist them, you pray all manner of prayer. We've also said, if you miss any of our episode please go back and listen to them again we will say something about those things about how these people who were influenced by the devil to work against us you know what when you show them the love god said you should show them you relieve them of that influence of the devil because you are now overcoming evil with good the devil don't want to hear that he wants to see you always fight and when you fight like that you fight the wrong battle yes you do and you are winning you are actually losing the battle meanwhile god expects you to win if you learn the right way that jesus taught us how to fight our enemies and i said it's actually a weapon when you love your enemies that's the weapon as they are attacking you you are also attacking back but the way you attack back look as if it is weak you respond with love you respond in a way that baffles them. And when you respond like that, what happens? You, that evil in them, you overcome it. And then the enemy, even if it's not permanently, but temporarily, you know, loses. We are going to look at what happened in the scriptures as a man showed his enemy love. You will get there. They can cry. At least momentarily, no matter who they are. It's only the devil that cannot respond to that kind of love. Now I want to read the book of Rome, uh, Proverbs chapter 24. I want to read verse 17 and verse 18. Then we take it from there. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. We are looking at how God sees it when you don't respond to your enemy the way God commanded us. Now look at where the word of God is telling us. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls. Don't let your heart be glad when he stumbles. That's a command that God gave us. Least if you do that, if the Lord see it, the Bible says it would displease the Lord. And he would turn away his wrath from your enemy. That is how serious it is. God doesn't like it. And we are going to find out why. Because this is the reason why the devil sends offenses. We read it the last time. That was on Tuesday. It was that today is Thursday on Tuesday. We said, when Jesus came on earth, he told us, he said, Woe unto the world because of offenses. The devil really uses the tool of offense to cause so many hurt and Pain in people's lives. You can overcome that if you learn how to fight the right way. So many Christians are hurt 
fighting because some human people, human agents, we are used to oppose them. And we have seen some Christians pick up some scriptures and use it to do some warfare battles, not against powers of darkness this time, but against human beings. You know, it is contradictory. God says, I do not desire the death of the righteous he, or the death of the wicked. For the death of the righteous, the Lord said, it is beautiful. It is pleasing. He said at the sight of the Lord, it is precious when he sees the righteous die. For the wicked, he said, I do not desire. It's not my pleasure. I don't desire the death of the wicked. And when we are making demand that the wicked perish, die because they have hurt you because you have seen them cause so many calamities you have had some losses because some people are just determined to cause you pain and you some people are filled with bitterness some people are filled with ways of how lord vengeance god said when it comes to that leave vengeance to me i will repay you cannot repay the people that have hurt you the way God will repay them. Your hands and your legs are too short to fight. Allow God to repay, to fight your battle. It comes to a point when God sees that you have shown them love and shown your enemy love and they insist on hurting you. And the truth is that there is not really anything that enemy can do to you if you are fighting the right way. Now look at what the Bible says. The Bible says when your enemy has fallen. So what about the rejoicing that the people of God rejoice when the people that are their enemies have fallen? See them, hallelujah, yes, they deserve that hurt. You know, you mean he had an accident? You mean he lost this? You mean his business collapsed? And we are rejoicing about it. The Bible says rejoice not when your enemies fall. And let not your heart be glad. When he stumbled, that he has not fallen, he just stumbled and maybe fell down and bruised himself, whatever. The Bible said, do not rejoice when you hear some bad things happen to them. Now we're going to find out, oh, I pray, I pray God will give us time, that time will permit us rather to really find out what the Bible told us about these things. The Bible said from this place, we have other places you're going to look at. He said, least the Lord see it and it displeased him. When you don't do this, you're not fighting the right way. And if you're not fighting the right way, you will bring yourself a lot of hurt. You will be wounded in this battle. It's a fight, we said. So fight the right way and no weapon of the enemy can penetrate you. He said, let the Lord see it and he displeased him and he turned away his wrath from him. God wants to release his wrath, his righteous judgment, the vengeance that he deserves. Don't rejoice when that vengeance, because even as God is giving that vengeance, it is hurting him. So don't rejoice. You rather show him mercy. When you see that person that have caused you pain is in pain, reach out to them, comfort them, because in comforting them, they are grieving. God is really working out that that sorrow will work to their repentance and God is expecting you for that enemy who is due to receive revenge is receiving that revenge from God God can turn away that work is working in their life that means you cut off the flow of what God wants to do God is really sending that judgment so that they can really repent and you can work together with God by showing them compassion by telling them you know what yes it is very hurting. Can we pray together? Can you ask God to forgive you? Can you really consider repenting of the ways? Do that and God will be pleased with you. But if you rejoice because the calamity has come upon them, because it will surely come, whether you pray for it or not. Some people are thinking that it is because they prayed some wicked, some brutal prayers against human enemies and things that are happening to them. Devil really is working over time. He will ignite you with bitterness and anger and frustration for you to begin to pray those kind of prayers. And when they are hurting because of what they did, you are also hurting. And by the time you are rejoicing because these things have happened to them, the whole battle has been lost. And who is winning? Evil. Jesus said, love your enemies. And the book of Romans 12, he says, do not be overcome of evil. It doesn't matter. 
what the evil. God knows about the evil on earth. You can't live through this life without being affected by one evil or the other, but overcome that evil with good. That is the beauty. Now, we have so many scriptures to read. Let's trust the Lord to give us grace to look at all of them. <laughs> I want to read Obadiah chapter 1, verse 12 and then 13. Obadiah chapter 1. It says, But thou should shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. In several scriptures, you will see where God is really commanding us when it's time for him to release judgment. He's releasing that judgment yet. He's not expecting us. You know why, why we should pray for them? Somebody say, yes, the Bible says you should pray for your enemies, but didn't tell you the kind of prayer you should pray so I can even pray. I can pray. Fire prayers for them. <laughs> no, 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 no. You ask God to deliver them from that evil that have taken hold of them. The Bible said, thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of, thy peop of my people in the day of their calamity. Calamity will surely come on with evil and on wickedness. But how do we respond to that? How do we see it? Do we rejoice? Or do we follow the pattern that the Lord has given us? God's intention is for the people of God to overcome evil with good. Do not, overcome, do not be overcome of evil, but overcome evil. I want to read that scripture. It's found in the book of Romans chapter 12. Verse 21, the Bible says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Look at what it says. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. You see, all over the scriptures you can see. Avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath. What we just read in the book of Proverbs 24 is where the wrath of God has come. And when the wrath comes, God said, do not even rejoice. And these are the principles. These are actually the tools we use to fight. Praying for your enemy, loving them. They are tools. They look weak. No wonder the Bible told us in the book of 1 Corinthians. He said that the weakness of God is stronger than men. The strongest strength of men is weakened. When we display these weapons of God that look seemingly weak, the weakness of God is stronger. And that is what he's saying. Don't avenge yourself. Give room for the wrath of God to fall upon that man, no matter how he has hurt you. Maybe you have lost a family member because of it. You may tell me, you are talking, Pastor Joy, you may don't understand how painful this thing is. You don't understand how hurt or how deep. The truth is that I may not have understood it. But I've also been through pain. And one formula is for every one of us. God wrote down these things for every one of us. You may say your husband cheated on you. He even had a, 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 another child out of wedlock and you didn't know about it. And you are so bitter. You feel so betrayed. That is the case of a woman listening to me now. How do you overcome it? How do you overcome it? Talking about deep pain, the enemy arranges. How do you fight it? Some people have really had health challenges because they have harbored bitterness and forgiveness. God wants to relieve you of that today. He wants to let those things, he wants to lose those things. They are heavy burdens tied to you and you can't make progress. And right now, your health is depreciating. Somebody is already taking medications and they'll tell you, don't get excited because if you come up to this particular excitement, whether in anger or too to people, I've heard people say, when they are too happy, too excited, something triggers up in their health. These things were initiated because there are hurts that they have not let go. The health is suffering. 
they are now managing some people's health because of because i don't know if you are part of the people whose health has been affected because of betrayers of men some people collapsed and by the time they got back themselves and became conscious they never regained who they are we're talking about regaining back the power of god is here and as we as we pray in the next few minutes we are going to pray whatever have attached itself to your life because of the betrayals because of of of, of the pain people have caused you they will lose their hold in your life you can be healed instantly right now if only you are ready to let go some people are they are, they are finding it difficult to let go they don't know how to let go because they feel the pain is deep yet the love of God is deeper than the depths that this pain has gone in your life. You just have to let go. Yes, you have to let go. You may have lost someone in the process. Just let go. You may have lost your job or a contract because of betrayal. You just have to let go. You, you should see what is ahead of you. Much more is ahead of you. And I say something that is more beautiful than every one of these. After you have won the battle by engaging in the right tools and weapons, you make the devil lose the fight. Because he is the unseen enemy in this. You are seeing only a human being involved in this, but behind that human is the devil. I have a scripture to read. Oh Lord. That scripture is about David. <laughs> I want to read it because our time is going. First Samuel chapter 24. Wow. I'll try and read it very fast. I don't know where to cut. So I'm going to read. It's about 10 verses. First Samuel 24 from verse 10. All right, it says, Behold, this day thy eyes have seen how that the Lord has delivered thee into my hands in the cave. And some people bade me kill thee, but my eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against the Lord, against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Verse 11, Moreover, my father, see, yeah, see the skirt of thy rope in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy rope and killed thee not. No doubt and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. Oh, and I have not sinned against thee yet. Thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee. But my hand shall not be upon thee. As said the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom has thou pursued? After a dead dog, after a flea, the Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee, and see and plead my cause and deliver me out of thy hand. Read that place, please. First Samuel 24. Yes. From that place, we saw the discourse going on between David and Saul. He vowed himself to be the arch enemy of, the, of David. Now, how we are these men able to see the details of what God expected them to react. David said, no. I rather allow God to avenge me of you. Several points he saw he could have killed him one, just one slice of the sword. That guy is, is a brutal man of war. But there is a war we fight. There are wars we, we are not supposed to engage in. So that God can avenge you and avenge you very well. We saw God's avenging David in that situation. Now we are looking at how God looks at it when you don't fight the right way. When you don't fight the right way, so far things are at stake. Number one, if you don't fight the right way, you lose the battle. Number two, if you don't fight the right way, God is displaced. We read it in the book of Proverbs 24. God is displaced. And when God is displaced, you know what happens? Not only did you lose the war, you position yourself 
for God to really release some things on you. Look at what God said. We read it in Obadiah chapter 1. We read that place where they, they like, they, I, I, I am really releasing the vengeance that this enemy is what? And you are rejoicing about it. Some of them, we are plund plundering the goods of the children of Judah because they have sinned exceedingly and God has been warning them. I have found that that it doesn't really please God. The Father is not happy. Our Heavenly Father is not happy when He's releasing judgment that is due to the wicked. He's not happy about it. He really would want us to show them the way out of that evil that oppresses them. We can really fight to relieve people from the evil that enslaves them through the love we show them. No wonder God shows us love. When you do evil, he forgives you and forgives you again. It is only when you continue in doing that that you don't know when your grace comes to a point where God said, I will no longer strive anymore with you. So we are trusting God to help us, relieve us from the hold that offenses has cost us so that we can find the right way. You can't find the right way when you are still bleeding. So we'll start by asking God for healing. As I said, as we pray right now, it doesn't matter where you are. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. It doesn't matter when you hear this video. There is no distance again in the realm of the spirit. The word of God carries power. Anytime you lift it up, you will see the power flow. You can trust God right now and say, Lord, I receive healing for the bleeding in my heart because of the stab of betrayals, offenses. I ask for your healing and help me to get up and fight the right way. It's a fight, it's a battle. It goes on every day. Can we pray together? Can you ask the Lord, Lord, show me how to fight the right way. I said something before I close. I said before that I have seen where Christians have picked up scriptures. And pray those scriptures against human beings that have fought against them. Do you know it is not scriptural? There are scriptures that we pick and pray, but it's not for human beings. Those scriptures are meant for the devil. We pray and resist forces of wickedness. But as for human beings, God said, I do not desire the death of the wicked. We really need to repent and ask God to forgive us some things we did because there is power in our tongue. There is power in our word. And God said we will give account of it. But you can be relieved of whatever you have done that is wrong and fighting the wrong way and ask God to help you. You start by asking God, please heal me of the bleeding. Some people are bleeding, they are not aware. Let me give you an example. When you hear some people react in a way, when they hear the name of this person, the name of this church, the name of this neighbor, you see what, how they react, you see that they are really hurting because that person has wounded them somewhere and calling their name or reminding them has actually opened up a wound. You see them reacting that way. They are wounded. They are bleeding. They are not even aware. You are going to ask God to heal you from any wound. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's your elder brother. Maybe it's your mother-in-law. And you remember how they have really treated you. Anytime you see them or remember them, you don't just want to get, uh, make anything good. You don't want to uh, even want, you don't want anything good to happen to them. That is a sign that you are a casualty of this battle. You can ask God and trust God to heal you from any wound you have incurred in this battle. And then, as you are healed, you pick up the weapons again and fight the right way. Now we are going to gather these things together. Whether you are you 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 have been offended and you are carrying the hurt, whether you're the one that was offended or you are the offender and. You are a child of God and you have prayed the wrong prayer. So you can ask God, Father, help me. Forgive me. Forgive me wonder I prayed these things and still I am on, I'm still struggling. Father, relieve me of this burden. Just relieve me of this burden. I want to be free. 
I want to behave like Jesus. I want to love my enemies. I want to show them the love of God. And Lord, I can't do it without your help. Begin to confess those things that are so bitter. Open it up. Open it up. I said the last time that you may have to go through the, 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 the remembrance of those things again and the pain and the tears may flow. But the Lord is there to heal you, to pour the balm. There is a balm in Gilead. He can heal you. He can make you whole. And you are free from that burden in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl hearing us right now who is ready to let go of every offense. Lord, I pray for your healing. And somebody who is not ready to let go, I ask her to give her a revelation. I ask her to give him a revelation, whoever they are, who is still holding tightly to the things people have done against them. Father, may you show them your love and show them the best weapon to use in this fight in the name of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you tonight. Every subtlety you have been releasing against the people of God, the Lord rebuke you. Every stronghold of offense in the name of Jesus, we attack you. And in the name of Jesus, we trust you, Abba Father, that the blood of Jesus would be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for releasing burdens. I see burdens relieved from people, heavy burdens they carry around for years. You are free from today in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone. I pray for you. That hurt and that pain, you will remember them after now. And you will thank God that you went through that because the fruit that will come out of it will be astounding. God bless you. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. I want to hear from you in case you want to talk about some of them. They may be too difficult. You can, you may not handle them alone. You feel free to, you know, WhatsApp us. Our number is there or send us an email and be assured we are praying for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. We want to make declaration. Yes, before we go, we declare that every power of darkness walking behind the scenes with these offenses, we declare in the name of Jesus, your hands are broken. The Bible says I've given you authority over every walk of darkness. We declare the works of darkness walking behind this. We bind you and we send you back wherever you came from. Father, let your love be shared in our hearts in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you till I come your way again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah.